it's good to have everybody back. It's just nice. And we're starting summer. How does that feel? How, oh, I love your chair, Lindsay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> if, if I didn't get to keep it, I'm glad that um, it's at your house. It's just so cool and it fits, it fits you. And it's here if you ever feel like you have I a need spot. To yeah. <laughs> oh, well, how is everybody? How are we doing? How are we feeling? We're done with the year. We're looking at summer now, trying to figure out what does that mean for us? Am I doing it the same as I always do? Am I doing anything different? Have I learned anything that's changed how I'm, you know, how I'm looking at things? Uh, Lindsay asked last night, what were your questions you asked last night about summer? Like, I don't know. Just like every time there's a new season, I was just thinking, okay, what is this next season going to bring for our family? Like, how are things going to look different? What things are we going to start? What things are we going to stop? Those types of things. This summer feels a little different for us because usually it's like an abrupt stop to everything and we just like chill. We like try to get all of our projects done and we're just kind of like in relaxed mode once it comes, but we kind of just decided not to do that this year, just kind of kept things kept going, but it like we're still still time to like relax and um, spend time with friends and things like that, but we're going to continue to do some sports and uh, we're going to keep piano going this summer a little bit here and there, and so we've kind of just decided to keep some routines and not let go of everything. So see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, different different years just kind of seem to change and you and also different ages of kids and where you're at as a mom yeah cadence it's so true and yet every year I'm surprised because I think oh now I've got it done so we'll just do it the same way as we did last year or I've got it all organized and then no and and the situation changes every year it's amazing yeah uh, it's funny though, isn't it? How it surprises you. <laughs> like, shouldn't I know this by now since it happens every single time? But yeah, that's funny. It's just like when you're around moms with new babies and they're like, okay, now we've got a schedule, you know, and all the rest of us laugh, you know, <laughs> I know. but it makes them feel better for a few days. <laughs> I know. I try not to laugh too loud out, like, you know, Right mm -hmm. then, but I'm like, that's so great. Like, you know, everything's always changing, but that's <laughs> so good. You get to sleep for right now. <laughs> right, right, right. You celebrate it with them, give that little hint that it might change again, just so that they're not, um, I can't think of the word, but just so they're not slammed with that, you know, new information when it change, changes after four days. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> hey, when COVID happened, and we had friends asking about homeschooling. Um, they said, how's your schedule? What does it look like? And I had littles, like littler littles <laughs> back then. I would say we reevaluate every three months. Oh. That's when my littles have growth sports. And every three months we reevaluate and our schedule changes. And they just looked at me and they're like, what, you can do that? <laughs> I was like, that's, yes. that's when they change and that's when they change. And isn't that wise? Isn't that wise? Does that give you some more um, feelings of control, Melissa? Because you know you're anticipating that it's going to change, and so you're not um, you're not so concerned about it. I don't know. Actually, right now I'm kind of struggling because this is normally when we kind of start our year routine is like the first of June, and. I have nothing. Normally at this point, I'm like, okay, this is what I feel like we need to do. This is like kind of the curriculum we're going to use or what we're going to focus on or, or whatever. And I have nothing. And I'm kind of actually like panicking a little bit <laughs> being like, okay, what does this mean? Like, what's the flow here that I don't know what it is I'm supposed to be doing or what that looks like. Um, and so for me that I don't like that. <laughs> um and so literally this weekend I was like hon I need to like buckle down and kind of just explore what we think we might want this year to look like <laughs> so um but on that note as I've kind of been pondering it this week hey, what do you think? 
there was a spider on the kitchen floor and um the kitchen floor okay. and got a new bed from it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um and so I was like, kind of been pondering it this week and trying to get a feel for it. The only thing that's come to mind for me this week, and I don't even know that it's an answer, but I kind of wanted to bring it up and get people's thoughts or ideas is artificial and artificial intelligence has come up so much this week for me and in well-educated heart it's come up and different things. And so I looked up the definition of artificial. I'm going to read it to you guys. I have it pulled up. It means made or produced by human beings rather than occurring naturally, especially as a copy of something natural. And in my Hebrew studies, I learned that the word order is associated with the wilderness. And that's where God would like send people in the wilderness because away from the cities, away from what man created to commune with him. <laughs> take time out of their lives to connect and and so and the word intelligence is associated with reading and thinking and determining what's in between and so that's just come to mind and I'm like okay are, are we created systems where we're creating artificial intelligence in our children where they're not getting authentic natural God-given intelligence, <laughs> we're artificially constructing it for them into what makes the most sense or order for us, as opposed to the natural order of things. And so, I don't know, all of this has come to my mind. I don't know what it means, but it's got me asking lots of questions and thinking about what, what it means for us this year and what that will look like. I've had, I remember having, well, I still do have those same thoughts, like that ebb and flow of, okay, like we have an idea of what we're doing. And then that like sudden realization that like, I don't know, we have no idea what we're doing. Like maybe we should be more intentional like plan things. But then like you said, I'll go through this whole process of like planning and trying to create what I think my children should learn or I should learn or what should happen. And then it doesn't feel natural. It does feel artificial. And then when I just let go and just kind of let things happen, like you probably are doing right now, just feeling you were relaxed. That's why you, all of a sudden you're realizing, oh, wait, what are we doing? But it, it is like you become like in this relaxed state of like just natural learning. And I think if we could just keep ourselves there, I don't know, what do you guys think? I think if we could keep ourselves in this like relaxed state of natural learning and just follow the spirit, follow the things that we're learning, like we're reading, and then we won't have that need to create this artificial environment for our, our families. I don't know. Can I just comment on that too? Mm -hmm. um, so I have been looking at some curriculum and it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's so lovely. I look at it and I'm like, ah, oh, that's so but then the spirit keeps bringing to my mind, that's not what you need to do. It kills me because it's gorgeous. It has all this well-educated heart stuff in it, you know? And, and uh, well, well, why can't I use this? And I don't know, just, it keeps coming to my mind that you'll get frustrated. You'll feel behind. You'll, your kids will get tired of this and that. And, and I don't know why, but it's, it's a no answer for me even though I love it and it looks gorgeous and I think it would be lovely to use it. So I don't know. It's kind of been weird this year planning for me as well, because I, my oldest is coming home when my two other ones are going to be at school. So it's a different dynamic. And I really feel like I need to step back a lot. I need to have her have the freedom to pick some things and to move forward with it. But I don't know, it's just, I don't even know where I'm going with this. But the point is, I'm, it's really hard to just follow the spirit, but it always turns out well when we do. Okay, I think this is super interesting discussion just because of some things that have come up <clears throat> lately. 
Um, Melissa, thank you for sharing what you shared about artificial intelligence and about applying that, looking at that um, in our own lives. Are we doing that? <clears throat> Are we doing that with ourselves, with what we're creating for us to be doing, how we spend our time as mothers, and then what we're bringing to our children? And Cadence, <laughs> I, I feel your pain. I know, I know, because there are things that I, I think to do or want to bring into my, just my life. And, <clears throat> and then I, I, something comes up and I'm reminded that, no, that's not what I need right now. That's not, that's not necessary. And it's kind of more of a, it, like what Lindsay was saying, that if we just sit back, kind of relax a little bit, allow that space for the spirit to be in there and we let him direct what we're doing it'll be so much better and it will not be this artificial you know artificially brought thing but it will be um it'll be genuine so th these are some interesting thoughts especially when you think about the things marlene has written a couple of times here about um about artificial intelligence um it's there are a lot of things to think about and i'm thinking too because i'm very involved in the behind the scenes thing for this new bellum at home that was announced right and normally i'm not the person who signs up for something you know that you have to pay a little bit for it that's just not me i don't i don't do that and um, when it came up i was i was the big you know naysayer um and uh and I shared my thoughts about that and costs for families and um, my concerns about that. And so we had a, a little private conversation about that. And I just, anyway, so I shared all my thoughts about it. And so things were kind of, there were some, um, there was, that was taken into consideration, cost for families and how it could be presented in a way that would be doable. And and um, when it came down to the end of it, I said, oh, my goodness, I would I would bake bread. I would bake cinnamon rolls. I would you know, I would go do some extra things to earn that extra money to pay for that. You know, I I would do that. I would it would be worth it to me. And so that that's why I'm in, you know, I'm all the way in because um, I, I just think this is a beautiful offering for families. And it might be why. Some of you feel this pause right now, like, ah, oh, I don't know what we're doing next year. I don't know what's happening. I'm not sure, you know, maybe, maybe there's something there for you that will, that will help you. Um, you'll have this tiny little foundation, just this little thing that you can do every day. And then the idea is then the rest of the day is left to you, which really should be left to him through you, right? And and I think that this is how families are going to grow exponentially and in preparation for um, for what's ahead for your children and their lives and the lives of their children. So, ah, yeah, I think that this um, it's so interesting. Lindsay and I were talking last night just about what are we going to talk about tomorrow? Where where is it going to go? Because we don't know ever. But to have it, I would never have guessed <laughs> that it would be this idea of art, artificial versus genuine um, and wherever you want to take that. But Melissa, I would love for you to come back on and share more thoughts about this. I think we need to hear again, even if you said exactly the same thing, to hear again your thoughts, what you looked up about the definitions and your thoughts about artificial intelligence and what are we doing? Are we creating that? Um, are we kind of doing that in our own, with our own children in their in their learning? So if you get a chance to come back, Melissa, we would um, would love that. Okay, I have to pull up definition because I don't have it memorized. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, and so the, when I just Google artificial definition, the first word that pops up is adjective, made or produced by human beings rather than occurring naturally especially as a copy of something natural. And and hang on and, one hang on one second. I'm going to I'm going to have you do that again because I think we need to hear that. I think this is really really important and I actually I asked Lindsay 
to message our friend Haley and ask her to pop on. So Haley, thank you for doing that. I, I, I feel like Haley is an important part of this discussion. And so Melissa um, started this discussion, Haley, and it is, oh, I just feel like it's, I feel kind of excited about it because I feel like this is very important for this group of women to understand these concepts as we move forward with whatever it is that Heavenly Father is gonna is asking us to do. So Melissa, would you share that definition of artificial um, again? So artificial adjective made or being produced by human beings rather than occurring naturally, especially as a copy of something natural. Okay, and then continue on with what you were thinking about this artificial intelligence and with our children in our learning. Um, so when I brought this up, the next thing I talked about was that in my, my learning of Hebrew, I looked at the word order about a year ago when I was curious what that kind of meant in the Hebrew culture. And the article I found talked about the word order and then it kind of said this word is related to this and it's related to this and it was related to... Um, and it talks about the word order being a command, not like the organization mm -hmm. of things. And it says that the word wilderness in Hebrew is related to that idea that the wilderness is the place of order, not the cities and towns that have been organized or ordered by man. In the Hebrew, the wilderness is the place of order, the place that God created, not man created. Um, and then... I looked up another Hebrew um, site about intelligence because I was thinking about artificial intelligence. And um, it said that the word intelligence um, means the word between. And it is related to being able to pick or read between the lines, to, to see two things and choose between the two or differentiate between the two and apparently those words or words related to them were used in the creation a lot when god would like organize the earth and say like it is good like i chose this path and this path was good i chose between these two or whatnot um and so i was contemplating that and it made me think because i'm thinking about what we're doing for homeschool this year and it made me think about educating our children and like we have an education system that is a construct of man so is that an artificial system are we teaching our children to learn artificially are we teaching them to pick between things that don't even matter because they're not god-given they're not natural are we pick having them learn to pick between two things that we decided um or multiple things that we decided and what would that look like? On the flip side, I don't think we're supposed to just do a free for all. We're supposed to create, you know, scaffoldings and construct for our kids to like be able to build time on. But are we making it too artificial? Are we just kind of leaving God out of it, the nature part out of it, and building these walls around them and saying, these are the options, this is what you have to do, this is the best option? Or, or what? Like, where, where's that balance? What does that look like? Am I creating an artificial intelligence in my children by dictating how they learn as opposed to including nature more, more natural ways, more God ways in it? And again, what, what does that look like? Does it look, are there universal baselines for everyone or, and then each family dictates out from there or, <laughs> or what? I don't know. That's why I'm here asking questions. <laughs> okay, I love this. I love this. I'm super excited. Are you excited, Haley, <laughs> by the discussion? Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Like while she was talking, I got goosebumps. Like that, I feel like that is something that I've been like, not in the same words, but pondering on very similar things. Um, and I don't even know if I have anything to say about it, but just, wow, I, I'm grateful to, to hear your question and to be able to ponder it with you. 
So Haley, I want you to take your experience, what you what you have been going through as you've been wrestling with God in what is what this thing is that you're going to do with women and what you know and um, where your work is and the the answer you received from Marlene and because doesn't that can't that sort of relate this idea that we try to create something do you see yeah yeah we're trying to create something but it's already there huh yeah yeah i see that wow okay so for me it's this and i have goosebumps too i just think yes this is the whole problem with but what are we going to do about what are we going to do for math what are we going to do for english what are we going to do for language arts what are we going to do for history what about this we have to have this we have to have this and what did melissa just call um or ask consider you know what about our public education system it's a construct of man right now how old is our system of public education has this been the way that we've learned for all these years? Is this what God has set up for us to learn? Is this the way? I mean, it is a way. It is a way. And I'm not, I'm not trying to take away from those who that is their way, right? <laughs> not you, not you, Cadence. <laughs> but but there are those of us who are in that system, and that is where we're supposed to be. Our children are supposed to be because of their influence. So we already know that Cadence's children are absolutely incredible, and that is why they're there. And it has got to be in a protected situation, I am confident. Otherwise, Heavenly Father wouldn't have put them there. So there is that. But is that his way of educating us? Is that the natural way of learning? And what Melissa said about order, about, you know, wisdom, I mean, wisdom, wilderness, and that that is, you know, that is where God's order is, order is in nature, right? And so why, and, and Lindsay added in the chat, nature is God's university. Not that all of, all we need to do is put our children outside in nature and that's where all their learning comes. Not that, but that nature, like in, in that phrase, all things denote that there is a God. And that being involved with our experiences with nature, we go out and we see these things and we just know there's no other answer than the fact that there is a God and this, that is how these things came to be the order of these things um, rather than evolution. I don't know if you guys have seen the documentary that I've recommended so many times, um, The Gardener. It's on Amazon Prime and I've now watched it, I think seven times. I mean, I just, I show it to people and I sit and watch it with them. I absolutely love that show. There's a woman on there and that's one of the um, commenters and she's, she says again, she says she doesn't believe in God, um, but she says, but there's something that happens when you're outside in nature, you know, she's talking about that, where it just feels like there's no other answer. Like it, it I wonder if maybe there is, because how else could all of this come to be? And um, so it's not just that we throw our kids outside or we take ourselves out in nature and that's how we learn everything, but that it's a natural thing that learning can come to us in much more natural ways than this prescribed box that we've kind of put it into. So Haley, I want to know your thoughts. I know I'm totally putting you on the spot, but I really believe that your learning process right now, you have something to share about this that that relates it, and it could be a completely different um, avenue but we'll be able to bring it in and relate it, each one of us into our own lives where we are right now. So your little learning process that you've just experienced over these past, the past few months. Ah, so oh, it is a lot, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if I can put in towards all the things that are going in my head, but um, it is so interesting thinking about how you know, we want to create something. And I almost think it's like, we want to create something that is concrete, that we can see, that we can see the progress, we can measure it. <laughs> you know, we're trying to, God already can see all the progress. He can see all the good, all the everything, but we want to be able to see it on the outside. So we're trying to create this way that we can say, look at this, look at, look at how I've, <laughs> you know, how I've grown, how I can, can do this now. And, and it's not, 
I don't think it's necessarily needed to, to be able to show everyone else how we've grown or what we can do. That is a natural, like it's natural fruit, right? When you plant the seed and you, the tree grows and fruit comes and we want to like, <laughs> I don't know, pick the fruit and show everyone what's in it <laughs> or something. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Yes, it's something like, yes, absolutely, that we want to create something concrete, something that we can see, something that we can show. Lindsay and I did the same thing with this, how Pinehurst evolved. You know, we were, we knew we were supposed to do something but we didn't know what. And so we, in our minds, in our experiences, we know, okay, we, we need to be able to present this. Here it is. Here's this thing. We've, we've come up with these ideas and here it is. And it just kept evolving and we kept talking and things kept changing. And we thought we, oh, it's this, you know, we wanted to package it, right? It's this. And then, well, it's changing again. Oh, it's this. No, it's changing again. I think he, he's, try, he's trying to make us stop doing that. Stop trying to say it's this. It looks like this or it is this list of things, right? What, what do you think about that, Lindsay? And uh, just the progression of what we were asked to do and what how it has ended up. And I don't even think it has ended up anywhere. I think it's a fluid thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, just like what you said, we always... We kept trying to create something that we could just repeat over and over again or something. And like, even looking back on this year going, okay, so we'll just kind of do the same thing again, but it still just doesn't seem like that'll work. And like we were saying earlier, Cadence, like you did, it worked last summer. Like, can't we do the exact same thing this summer and like have the same results, but things are always changing and the people people you're around are changing and your children, your family is changing. Um, so everything you do has to constantly be um, evolving. flexible, evolving. And like, you just need to be open instead of closed and like, nope, this is what we're doing. Because yeah. you're well, not leaving room for the spirit. Yeah, exactly. And Melissa's idea of this every three months reevaluating where they are rather than, and for people on the outside going, wait, 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 you have a school year. Like you have a school year. You wouldn't, no, 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 no. That's not my question. What are you doing for this next school year? <laughs> like, don't tell me that I'm going to have to change what I've planned in three months. Cause that doesn't work for me. Right. But I th didn't Heavenly father teach us that with our newborn babies. When I said that earlier, when I, you know, tied into that, I didn't even think about how that could relate to this to where we are right now. But isn't that one of the first things he taught us as a parent is that it doesn't stay this, you haven't figured it out. You, know, you haven't figured anything out. Just keep coming to me because tomorrow it'll be different. Yeah, Haley. Okay, so I was just listening to the podcast. I think it's 179. It's called Angels Among Us. And Marlene talks about, oh, I can't remember her first name. I think it's Rosemary Brown. And this book that she wrote and the, these composers like Beethoven and Franz Litz, they were coming to her and having her tell about or like, like write new compositions that they wanted to share. And people thought she was crazy, but she just kind of shares all these different pieces. And she says that um, towards the end, actually, Albert Einstein talked with her and um, he said that people don't want to think about things. They want to be told what to do. And that um, there's just so many, there's, there's only, you know, he said there's only like 10 people in the world that actually use their thinking abilities and, and things like that. Um, but then Marlene pulls it in and says, you know, there's another guy who talked about how the ability for us to learn um, when we're children is is so incredible and that one of those reasons is because we're not trying to make it concrete right that it's always changing always growing and oh I just feel like this has so much to do with what, what we're talking about and I can't I can't remember the exact words but go and listen to that that podcast especially the end because what she's talking about is like we are so capable and um you know she talks about the temple versus tower learning the the v 
And she says, you know, history repeats itself, but um, I believe that it's going up, that we're continually growing our capacity. Yes, it's going in circles, but we're growing. And oh, I feel like that's why maybe we can't make it concrete because we are hitting that capacity where we are making it bigger and wider all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's incredible. Right. Because it's a fluid thing. It's continuing. We're opening up for more and more and more growth. So why would we say, oh, wait, 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 I need to. No, 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 no. Don't stop. Keep going. Right. Keep going. More's coming. More's coming. So, Melissa, I love that you do this, this idea of reevaluating, you know, and then I think about Lindsay's Sunday night. Blank paper. Blank page something what is it blank page blank blank page brainstorming okay <laughs> that she does you know for herself for her family this idea of just opening up taking a minute you know the lean back that just is so that whole thing is so important i seriously i'm uh, co contemplate i feel like i need to write a book that's called lean back you know that talks about this idea of physically lean back take a moment, take a deep breath, relax, right? And, and that idea that I've just now made room between me and whatever the situation was, whatever the thing I'm thinking about, whatever the thing is that's going on, I've just made room in here for the spirit to come, right? Now, because I'm still, now I can get that inspiration, that revelation can come, I, I can hear Right. And then I can think about that thing that only 10 of us do. Let's add to that number, shall we? <laughs> and we start thinking about, okay, oh, okay. I, that's very different from everything I see around me. But, hmm, I, that could be good, right? Maybe, maybe I should be open to inspiration from heaven maybe that would be a good way to move forward in my life you know rather than okay i've got my little booklet here i've got my little checklist these things that are important to me these things that somebody else people around me always ask me are you doing this are you doing that are you doing you know and i don't want to be embarrassed and i don't want to not have an answer so i've got my list my list isn't important I have a hummingbird at my window. That's so cool. My list is not important. Maybe I feel like that's a little confirmation. You're right. <laughs> um, it's not. It's not. If we could have the courage to say, here, <laughs> I'm going to give all this to you and let you tell me what I'm supposed to do, right? It really takes so much courage to accept something that seems really scary <laughs> that's at least how I felt with my kids in public school and some yeah so that's things I'm considering so it does yeah thank you Cadence it's important that you're here because you are an example to us for that because we know that you exercise faith and you did what you were asked to do despite how fiercely you wanted the opposite but you did it and having that courage and that hope, right? It's that, that hope that you're just like, oh, that it's gonna be okay. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't see, I can't explain it. I can't defend it, <laughs> but, but he's in charge. No, why don't we let him be in charge? Ida, you had thoughts earlier. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Cadence, I feel you. Although my kids are back, it was really, really scary. Um, but I think it was super important that I did that in hindsight. <clears throat> so, um, I kind of jumped in late to the conversation. So I just love what I'm hearing because it's resonating with things that are, are on my mind <laughs> too. Um, so all my oldest four, my four, four oldest kids went to Washington State for the summer, and they're all mm -hmm. there working and staying with my sister and her husband. Wow. Her husband is actually my brother-in-law, so my husband and 
my me and my husband married siblings. siblings. Does that make sense? <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> so they were there, and that was really hard. Like I was, I have so many thoughts about that. Like, but I felt like I needed to send them, and that that would be a good experience for them. And um, it was kind of surprising how much that like totally threw me off kilter. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do with my time? Like, I didn't even want to get out of bed. I was like feeling depressed. Like, my purpose for living is gone. <laughs> I mean, I have five other kids at home, but I was like, this is nothing. <laughs> Which is really ridiculous, but that's how I felt. It was just like, oh my god, oh my gosh, what what do I do? What do I do now? And just worrying about like so many things like how am I gonna connect with them when they're so far away how am I gonna maintain like help them to know that I'm still thinking about them and I love them and I'm supporting them and all these things and worrying about what you know what they're gonna experience and all that you know just letting my mind go but as I pondered that I felt also that I really needed to take time and be intentional about the time that I spent with my younger kids that are at home helping them and having like building connections with them stronger connections with them because i have more time like my older kids i was driving them around and taking them here and there and it was like always going and it was exhausting and so most of the time the little kids were like at home like just sort of fending for themselves with an older sibling to watch them or whatever you know and they weren't getting that one-on-one -on -one time as much with me and so I felt like I really needed to do that somehow, just being more present, right? Well, then, yeah, like a couple of days ago, my sister was like, hey, I am applying for this job where you can work remotely. And they're hiring in Texas, too, and you should apply. And I had been kind of like in the back of my mind thinking maybe I should work because so my husband has been working really hard and my kids part of the reason they went to Washington was to help our family because we want to move to Missouri of all places and it's so crazy <laughs> but we're like okay well and we keep trying to put it in this box like well maybe this is the reason or maybe this is how it's going to look and all these things and I'm just like every like it's changing all the time and I'm just like I feel like I'm in the waiting place and I'm like okay here's your itinerary just kidding just kidding <laughs> in my head I'm trying to like be like this is what's happening right no no okay just kidding <laughs> and so I I was like well maybe I should work like I could get a job and I can help too instead of just being at home because sometimes I feel like you know like my kids especially my teenagers they look at me like mom you do nothing all day I'm like okay well really that's not true but it might seem as if I'm doing nothing sometimes <laughs> and so I didn't want them to feel like well mom's not working dad's working and we're all working and we're helping and mom's just sitting at home eating her bonbons <laughs> and so I was like feeling a little bit of pressure to do that and then I was like well this I could work from home so you know so I applied for the job and I had an interview and then they're like, okay, we want you to come for another, have another interview on Monday. And I had talked to my husband about it and Dean bless his heart. And I love him. He was like, I don't like this idea. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I can help. It'll be great. Like, you know, the kids will be fine. Da, 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 da. And then I was talking to my older kids about it. And my daughter's like, yeah, you should do it. You could totally take the kids over to grandma and grandpa's house, which is 30 minutes away, leave them there all day and then go work and then come back and pick them up. And I was like, uh, well, I mean, that's kind of a long ways. And then as I'm explaining it to her and like being like, well, you know, that's a long time away from me. And they kind of need like help and attention and mom to be there, you know, like like you needed you know and she's like well yeah I mean okay well whatever I know it'll be fine <laughs> but as I was like just like trying to figure this out and like my friends here were all like yeah that's great that's a great idea and even if they I think they were just like 
supportive, whatever, you know, not like trying to sway me one way or the other, but like, yeah, you could totally do that. But I just kept feeling like indecision about it. Like this, it's like, I haven't gotten the job or anything, but I was like, I don't know, 25 hours a week. That's a long time. That's like, you know, at least five hours a day, probably several days a week. Anyways, so this morning I prayed about it and I was like, Heavenly Father, I don't feel like this is a good idea, <laughs> even though it's hard for me to say that. So, you know, like if you could send me a little bit of confirmation that I'm on the right track, that would be really great. <laughs> And so then I, I was listening to some talks that I listened to Elder Uchtdorf's talk about um, the strength of parents. Christ is the strength of parents, something like that. Anyways, and it was so perfect. And just lots of things since then that people that I've listened to or then been said to me that I was like, in fact, my friend sent me this video about, it's a song, it's a rap song by this black man about um the homemakers i don't know if you guys have seen it it's a it's funny but it's good it's like the lyrics are like totally like all about my, my wife's a homemaker and she's so awesome and she does this and this and this <laughs> i think i might have sent it to you guys anyways it's not like my favorite song but it's just funny and i <laughs> get a kick out of it and so she sent that to me and last night when i was like thinking about all this and i was just like i think that's a sign Emily father but Anyways, and, and and part of it too, I think Kaylee was talking about, it's like, I want to have this tangible thing that I can do that I can be like, look, I'm contributing, but then just totally discounting like, and all the things I like know about like that Marlene has taught about well-educated heart and being women of influence. Like I need to be present in order to be helpful and influence my children in the way that I need to. For me, like, right, that might not be true for everybody else in their situations, but for me, I'm like, I really need to be here and be present with my kids during this time to help them. And that is going to be more, way, way more important than any financial contribution that I could bring to our family by spending 25 hours a week not present, you know? Anyway, so that was long, but it's been... <laughs> So I emailed today and I told him, I'm sorry, it's not the right time for me. Thanks. And I was like feeling so much peace after that and just be like, okay, yeah, this is right. <laughs> so. Okay. I love that. I love that you shared that whole experience. That's important that you shared the whole thing. And I especially loved the part about we want, we want something concrete. We want that tangible thing and homemaking you'd think maybe there would be some tangible evidence you know of what you did during the day but you know if you catch me right here in this moment you you'd see something that i did you know in this moment over here you'd see that it, this was done for a, you know a few minutes and but it's just you know we know <laughs> it's that cycle of things being done for a second and undone and done and undone and you know but not a lot of tangible and mothering where's where is that evidence where is that concrete evidence i don't know that we have it until the end of our lives and the end of their lives you know you get little glimpses here and there but it comes so much later okay i need to see what you guys shared here haley said ida you made me think of the newsletter it talks about the wife of a multi-billion dollar company that learned all she needed being a homemaker we need that haley um Ida tell me what sometimes the smell of food wafting through the house got that's, explain. that's one of the fruits of motherhood right sometimes you come home and you're like mm, it smells good in here yes mom's here right you know one one of the things that I was thinking about during this process of like trying to figure out what I should do is like when I was a kid my mom started working when I was like in middle school and she had been working like sort of but really like full-time working and I remember how that felt for me like I was like I want my mom here and I never really said anything about it but it made such a difference in the feeling of our home having mom around and it not just around but like like it, it like everything came together so much better like it's not like she was perfect and she got grumpy or whatever all the things but just being there it was like okay 
you know, like you feel relief and less stress as a child, knowing that mom's got this and she's totally, she's, she's going to take care of us. Right. And so I thought about that and I was like, you know, I don't want my kids to feel like it, even if I'm just in the other room, like totally checked out on my computer or phone doing work. Like, I don't want my kids to be like, just going crazy in the background and not feeling like mom is actually here, you know, like it's, it really changes the feeling. Ida, I just wanted to thank, thank you for uh, sharing that. And I'm going to cry because my family has had little to no income all year. And I've been wondering whether to start with you ladies or not. It's been very stressful for me. And my, uh, I was just thinking earlier, I'm like, well, I mean, I could go working and I can have my mother-in-law watch the kids while I'm gone. Um, Cause my husband's an entrepreneur and his business has not been doing well. Um, and so we haven't had much of any money flowing to us. And you sharing your experience was like, okay. And I have a really strong testament. I'm supposed to be home with the kids. And I'm like, but there's no money. And I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And I um, just want to thank you for sharing that because it's been very stressful for me all year about, okay, how are we paying the bills because there's no money. And I get a little bit from babysitting. Um, like I babysat my friend's children yesterday because she's at a teacher meeting. Because um, I thought, well, I could go with my daughter who's now six. And she was like, I mentioned to my husband, so this was six years ago, I'm like, you know, maybe when I'm done nursing her, I can go substitute teach because I know that because I was a teacher and I feel like I could do that. And um, he's like, no, just help me with my business. I'm like, I don't know what that means. And he, so his answer is kind of like, no, because who's going to watch the kids? Who's the point? What's the point in you going out to work to pay someone else to watch the kids? I'm like, I'm all for that, but there's still no money flowing. <laughs> so anyway, just thank you for sharing that. And I just hope I can figure out what I'm supposed to be doing because um, it's been really a struggle for a long time. Mary, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that. And that's why we come here. <laughs> These discussions are amazing to me and um, how they affect our lives and how they answer questions for us or help us continue having faith and you know courage and hope and moving forward in the things that we we know we're feeling we should do but we it doesn't it doesn't measure up like it, we can't see how that's going to be the right answer um so uh, yeah i'm i'm really i'm so grateful for these conversations Okay, anybody else? You guys have more thoughts about how this is applying to you? <clears throat> or things you that have happened that you know with you that can that relate somehow to this. And you know those <laughs> the connections can be, you know, they don't have to make sense to everybody else for there to be a connection for you, right? When I'm quiet, it's because there's somebody that needs to share. There you go, Lindsay. <laughs> I always feel like I need to unmute. And then I'm like, I don't know what to say. It's like when you walk up, you know, just stand on the space and then you're like, why am I here? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just feel like there's so many things that have connected with things that are just happening in my life recently. So I don't know. I've had a hard time lately. My husband and I have been kind of arguing about things because he keeps going, look what I finished, look what I finished. And he's just excited. And he just needs a supportive wife to go, good job, like, that's awesome. That looks great. Instead, I'm over here, like, just fuming on the insects. I'm like, great, you get to finish things. I don't get to finish things. I don't have tangible evidence of things I did. You have lots of things that you did. You know, I'm just comparing. And it's been so overwhelming. And I finally, like, had a humbling moment. And I'm like, it's fine. It's great. Like I'm, I'm genuinely happy for him now. Now he just keeps giving me a hard time. He's like, should I tell you that I finished something? <laughs> Do you not want to know about it right now? It's just kind of funny, but I don't know, just so many things. And right after this, I have a friend coming over and um, somebody who's been part of my life for a long time and she's left and 
come back and I just and she was telling me about this bookkeeping thing and so she's coming to train me how to do bookkeeping and I'm just like wondering where this is going and just kind of following it and anyway I'm just curious to see how that works because like we've been talking about like it's not that I need a job I don't need to be working so um I don't know it's kind of fun to see where where connections may happen at some point but I don't know I have so many thoughts in my head and I just keep going back to the thought that like we start out with babies and Heavenly Father I just didn't realize all the lessons he was teaching us to these newborn babies and I just keep learning those I mean I can't believe that at that time like I was supposed to be learning that things are always going to be changing and what were the other things we were thinking? I had these other thoughts and they're gone now because I have too many thoughts going through my head. This was good. You know, I was thinking the other day, um, like I, I move a lot and I'm like, here I am trying to move again. And I'm like, is this going to be the place where I like feel at home and I get to stay there? And like, I'm not like in a few years, like, okay, it's time to go again. <laughs> And then it was just like, no, Ida, it's not the place you're going to feel at home because you're not home there. And, and it was like, just a reminder, like, this life is not the end goal, right? Like, there's no place here that's really going to feel the same as when we go back to our Heavenly Father, right? And so we have little glimpses of that, like when we go to the temple and we have experiences there or whatever, but sometimes we're just you know like one like nephi says wanders in a strange land you know oh i know that's really sweet gosh that makes me think about so many things just think oh can we just focus on the things of heaven you know can we just spend time with our families can we just enjoy the beautiful things how much more, like, how much more of the world can I push out of my life? No? No, Haley. I just had the thought the other day, I was thinking about what makes it heaven on earth. And, um, you know, when I'm with my family is when I feel like it's heaven on earth. And then I had this, like, thought that, like, heaven on earth is when we feel like God is with us. So how can we feel like God is with us more? I really like that. Okay, other thoughts? Yeah, Melissa. Wow, I love that. Uh, I might cut out in a minute, but um, when we were on our vacation in Hawaii, we got to get a tour of an 800-year-old fish hatchery. And I was just amazed that like if somebody had said, okay, we're going to make this, it's going to last for 800 years. Whatever you do today is going to last 800 years and still be fully functional. No. Like we're in such a throwaway society that we, we don't think past the next goal often. What's the next step? What's the next goal? Like, like baptism, you know, in the church and the LDS churches, like there are milestones set <laughs> up. Up or whatnot, but like I can't imagine. Like, would my homeschooling be different if I saw? Okay, what I'm doing right now, I want to have an effect for the next 300 years. Like, would I homeschool different, differently? Would I live my life differently? And they also talked about how the Polynesians, when they were when they were going around discovering islands for thousands of years they would be on an island for a couple thousand years and they'd observe nature. They'd observe the waves and the clouds. They learned that clouds kind of congregate over land and the pattern of the birds, like, oh, these birds are land birds, but they come here every year. They've got to come from somewhere. So what directions are they coming from? Do we have any other hints from these birds about where they go, where there's other land and the fish and the, like all the things they just observed over time and taught their kids and were able to find a dock in the Pacific, which is like amazingly hard to do <laughs> um, without modern technology. And so like, 
were oh. they thinking I'm gonna observe these clouds and these birds and my great 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 grandchildren are gonna discover where they come from because I'm doing my part for them like in our mind it's like oh great you learned about clouds like <laughs> But what they learned about clouds made it possible for their children to explore and thrive, hopefully. <laughs> generally. But um, I feel like maybe I'm a little short-sighted in the influence I could have. Thinking, what do I need to do this week or this year for my kids instead of like, what's the overreaching goal? <laughs> So I don't know, but wow, these are these are such big questions. These are just like expanding um, what we're talking about here so much. Melissa, thank you for sharing that. I just said, oh, that's so good. What kind of foundation are you building for your children to build upon? And then Haley shared a talk that we're all, I'm sure, going to go and read. Um, he talks about building something to last a thousand years and how it changes your perspective. Oh, um, and what do I need to do for my kids eternally from cadence? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And I know we're like past time, but ladies, can we think about this? Is this something that we can really build on? You know, this idea of ask Heavenly Father for the direction for today and for tomorrow, for this week, for our families. And and like this, this little shift for me, not because, um, not, in, the, not in a small way, like that seems small and that seems very much just right now, but it's this idea of living in the present, but being directed by him because he can see and he knows what things are coming way out in the future, right? And he can help us to stay focused on those things that matter the things that will affect the generations. And I, I think we forget and don't think about, I don't think about that. I don't think about how I can be influencing the generations that follow, right? And when we're talking about this bellom at home that we started in the very beginning, just talking about a little bit, this idea that the families that are gonna be involved this year in this offering, are going to get a paver that has your family name on it, you know, to be installed at the actual campus. And the whole point of that is for your grandchildren to be able to see that and know that you built this for them. And um, there's something there. It's something we have let go of. You know, we haven't had that kind of focus, I think, for a long time as a people, you know, but God's people are supposed to have that kind of focus. We are his people. So shouldn't we have that kind of focus, right? For ourselves and for our families. I'm not doing what I'm doing today for me. And so maybe the selfish part of our wants and our objections maybe goes away a little bit, a lot. When I was just thinking, when you read those old books about mothers, you know, the reason they're the way they are is because they're not thinking about I don't want to do that. I I don't feel like doing that. I want to have that. No, they're thinking about how this impacts my family, how this impacts my husband, how this impacts the future generations. I'm doing what I'm doing for a much higher purpose, right? It, my 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 growth here began, I'm sure, way back, but but just recently, I feel like there's been so much that I've been being taught. And this hospitality idea that we talked about a little bit last week, you know, two times with Marley and then on Friday again, this idea that we're doing it for God. We're, we're, we need to take ourselves out of the equation and do what we're doing for a higher purpose and have that be how we govern every part of our lives. And, and really, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you're all getting from this, but I'm sure we'll get different things. But my goodness, this has been a powerful discussion. So thank you. And obviously, Melissa dropped out because she drove out of range. But 
I think those of us who were here, this was an important message for us to hear for probably different reasons. But now I would encourage us all to go out and do, right? Make the changes and do the things that we need to do for him. Can Ida. I share a couple thoughts after I want to read oh. Ida's thought? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Ida. Ida, go ahead and share out loud and then we'll go, Mary. Uh, it's fine. I was just, I just love coming here. I always feel so uplifted and nourished and like just my heart is full. And I, it's, it's always a treat whenever I can sneak away. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> thank you. Well, it was important that you were here. So thank you. Yeah, Mary. Um, so I recently was, I become, became aware of a talk from President Benson from 1970 from conference. And he, I just wanted to read one little snippet in here that went along with something like earlier. He says, uh, the 10th plank in Karl Marx, Marx's manifesto for destroying our kind of civilization advocated the establishment of free education for all children in public schools. And so how are you talking about you know, you don't want to have to have people pay for the bell on and stuff. I'm like, I, I'm realizing the, um, why that's important because there's also another article thing that I was reading that it says, um, so Brigham Young, Brigham Young told Carl G. Mazur that I want you to remember that you ought not to teach even the alphabet or the multiplication tables without the spirit of God. And the article continues saying the leadership of the church set out to create an environment where this type of learning was accessible to the saints. They established church schools and selected morally upright teachers to instruct the children. Every family that participated was required to pay a small tuition in order to cover the teacher's salary. So that was, you know, like the 1890s, I think. And I was like, oh, even back then they wanted to not, you know, not make publication free or education free for all, because then someone else is in, in control. And so I, I don't know, I just thought that was a cool connection, especially since you brought up the, the thing about paying for Bellam. And I was like, you know what, it is important to, to put our financial resources into these areas. Thank you for bringing that up because that's, I've been reading Carl Mazur stuff. I've been reading about the early education of the church. That's a thing I've talked about for years is that God said here, this is what you do. <laughs> this is how we're going to educate our families. This is how we're going to re retain that freedom of learning, right? Um, is through these schools that we will start there'll be private schools and here but you'll have to help i mean you have to help pay for them because there's not government funds coming into them but what happened as soon as the free schools showed up in the state of utah oh let's go over there it's free you know we don't have to pay for it oh that'll be great well you're it's not free it's not free <laughs> look at where we are it's not free yeah so it's interesting isn't it so interesting the more we learn our eyes are opened and then the more we open our hearts the more we're willing to do things the way he wants us to do them so yeah thank you everybody every one of you was so important today in the discussion and haley um oh thanks Lindsay. But haley thanks for being willing to jump on last minute because i appreciate that I'm so, I keep thinking, we're probably done, right? Meeting on Fridays, like, uh, you know, I, um, because, because I have to start it, right? It just seems like, you know, why am I doing this? Like, are you guys just coming because you're nice to me, you know? Um, but you're busy moms, and so I don't think that's true. I think we're all here because we're supposed to be here. I think Heavenly Father has brought us together to learn things and in a way that we can't without each other we each have to come you know we're each learning we're each doing things right little things they're little things so don't discount them just because they're not a big thing um your little thing and your little thing and your little thing and my little thing we bring them together and we we look at them together and we go oh my gosh i didn't think about that you know i didn't realize that and your little thing adds to my little thing <laughs> and now i'm starting to put those puzzles into place and we're we're understanding so 
Thank you for helping my understanding grow. So thanks for being here. And maybe we'll meet again next Friday. <laughs> so uh, have a wonderful week. Try so hard to be spirit led and try so very much harder to have your hearts open and receive all the goodness that you deserve because you're trying so hard because you're striving to do what's right. Holy Father loves you and wants you to know that you're doing well. You really are. And the more you open up to him and the more you let go of all that other stuff that you think has to happen, the happier you'll be. So I love you. Thanks for being here.